The lecture will be a very personal account of research which I have been undertaking to understand how fluids flow in the Earth. And the applications will range from how we produce oil and gas from underground reservoirs through to um, how volcanoes work. Fluid flow in the Earth has a huge range of impacts on people's lives. One obvious example is oil and gas production. Whenever we produce those resources from underground reservoirs, the fluids have to flow through the rocks to the production wells. And understanding how that happens is crucial to maximising the efficiency with which we recover these important resources. Another example is volcanic eruptions. To understand how volcanoes work, we have to understand how magma flows through the earth, and volcanic eruptions can have a big impact on, on people's lives. Understanding how fluid flow in the earth occurs is very important from an environmental perspective. One important example is the production of fresh water from underground aquifers. Here in the southeast of the UK and elsewhere around the world, our fresh water is largely sourced from underground aquifers. And if we don't produce the water from those aquifers in a responsible way, there's a risk that we can bring saline water into the aquifer, which means that we can no longer use it and we lose that precious fresh water resource. The greatest challenge that we face in understanding how fluid flow occurs in the Earth is the depth of burial of the systems of interest. Typically, we're looking at fluid flow in rocks that may be buried several kilometres or more underground, and the data that we have to describe those systems is very sparse. That means we have to be very creative in how we maximise the use of that data and how we develop methods and models that allow us to understand what's happening. One way we can understand how fluid flow occurs in rocks that are deeply buried is to study those which are exposed at the surface. And to do that, I've travelled to a lot of very interesting field locations around the world. One of my favourite is the western desert of Egypt. The rocks exposed there are absolutely spectacular, but there's a much broader reason why it's a fascinating place to visit. You can see some local life. It's very far off the tourist trail, so everyone you see there is going about their everyday lives and there is a huge range of, of ancient Egyptian artefacts which are there, which are not marked in any tourist maps and are very rarely visited. One of the aspects of being a professor at Imperial that I really enjoy is the fact that I can do something that I find incredibly interesting. Now I, I, each morning I get up and come to work, I'm looking forward to solving some big challenges and working with my students on interesting research questions. And that freedom to work on things that I find of enormous interest to me whilst feeling I'm making a very positive contribution to the wider scientific community and I hope the worldwide community is really important to me. One of the things I really like about my job is meeting students um, who I've been involved in teaching or have been research students with me, uh, meeting them after they've left Imperial and seeing how they're moving on in their careers and hearing about what a big contribution Imperial and their time at Imperial has, has had towards them achieving their goals. One active area of research is the development of new methods to monitor flow underground. What we're particularly focusing on are measurements of something called the spontaneous potential. And this is an electrical potential which is generated in direct response to the flow of fluids through rocks. And we're researching this using three methods. The first is numerical modelling. The second is to do field experiments where we actually inject fluids into rocks underground. And the third is to do laboratory experiments where we take pieces of rock in a controlled environment, we pump fluids through those from one reservoir to another, and we measure the electrical potential that arises in response to that.